Today I'd like to go over a new product called the Self-Centering Guide that works with the Festool Domino Joiner. Now, uh, this isn't a Festool product, it's actually by RTS Engineering, which is a side project of Rick Christofferson. And you've probably heard that name before on this podcast because I've referred to him often for his sort of quasi-unofficial manuals for the Festool products that go into a lot more detail than you'll ever find in the regular Festool manuals. Now, if you're familiar with the Domino trim stops, those are the guides that attach to the front of your domino. They're going to fit onto the fence, they slide onto the fence, and they'll provide you with a couple reference surfaces there. So you can take a block of wood and you can slide it up into there and mortise into the end. That's how the trim stops work and it works really, really well if you're trying to place a bunch of dominoes in, say, some rail material or style material, but then you're still left to your own measurement and markings for doing the opposite piece because you can't put a piece in sideways like this in some of the trim stops. And those rely on the fence being down, so there are certain positions that you can't use the domino with to take advantage of the trim stop. This self-centering guide actually attaches to the bottom of the domino using the two holes that are down here. Now there is normally an attachment that you use for the domino to help keep it vertical, you know, it's just an extra foot, and that's what this relies on are the two screws that are down there. So what this provides is it provides some additional stops for you, but they're on the front, so whether the fence is up or the fence is down, you can still use them. Now, if you've been watching my podcast for some time, you know that with my pro projects, I use my pin style domino with these narrow stock spacers. These fit over top of the pins, and what they do, like in this case here, it'll actually, if you have inch and a half stock, it'll center that mortise on the inch of the inch and a half stock. This one for inch and three quarters, etc. So, of course, these are for some integral sizes, and they rely on a pin style domino. With this self-centering guide attaching just to the bottom, it'll actually work on the paddle style dominoes as well, and these centering will allow you to have infinite adjustment over, say, these integral spacers. So there's a lot more versatility with this than these. So the reason I got very interested in this is whenever I use these narrow stock spacers on my podcast, I end up answering a lot of questions about, well, what do I do if I have a paddle style domino? So this is the answer. Now you saw a little about how it works when I was moving this one here. I have them currently loosened. You don't want to do this while they're tightened up. But when you move one to the other side, the other one moves an equal amount. So these things always stay centered around the middle. It uses a cable mechanism here so that basically it's always going to be precisely, it's not going to slide. You don't have to recalibrate it. Once we calibrate it, and I'm going to be showing you that today to get it centered over the mortise, you're never going to have to worry about that calibration again. You'll just be able to squeeze this onto your stock, tighten these things down, and away you go. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so I can give you a really quick guided tour of the, of the parts and then we're going to go ahead and do the calibration onto the domino. Then at the end I'll give you a brief tour of how to use it when you're doing say a rail and style face frame. Now the self-centering guide does come with a manual and it has the initial calibration procedure outlined in there. It turns out that that procedure doesn't work as well for me because of my particular domino and I'll explain why when I get there. Uh, but go ahead and take a look at the manual if you want to use that procedure fine. I'm going to be documenting here in the video how I calibrated mine. So it's going to give you an option, a different way of doing it. If you like this way, great. If you like the way in the manual, great. So it gives you some choices. Now for doing this calibration, you're going to need a small block of wood. Uh, I went and uh, this is a, a, a piece of exotic wafer board that I picked up on a trip from Peru. I harvested it myself, uh, green in the Amazon. And what it is, I set this one to 60 millimeters wide, just an arbitrary size. I don't want it too narrow because I want to be able to register off this end, but I don't want it so wide that it's going to be kind of on the out, outer edges of this guide. So I've just picked 60 millimeters as a convenient size. Uh, I used wafer board because that's what I had in my scrap bin. Now my calibration procedure assumes that you've already set the cursor to being dead center. So there's a calibration that you need to do. You're only going to need to do it once. Mine's been calibrated now for over two years and it's dead on still. So uh, it's a bit of a tedious process. You know, you try it and then you divide the error by two and sort of a divide and conquer. But once you get it done, you're done. So I highly recommend that you do that, even if you're not going to use this. You, you want your tool to be adjusted properly. I'll be producing a video in a couple weeks that's going to show you how to calibrate this cursor as well as your pins or paddles. So assuming that your cursor hairs are already calibrated, we can go ahead and start on this calibration procedure. Uh, just to start, I'm going to tip down the fence so that it'll stand upside down a little easier here on the vise. And I'm going to place this on the bottom. Now there are some bars here on the bottom. These are going to be snugged up onto the base of your domino after we've done the calibration so that in the future all you do is attach it and it'll automatically reassume the calibration. So initially these are shipped 
with the bars all the way to the outside so that you can fit them on and have plenty of play. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the base. Now, I'll admit I put a couple drops of TriFlow on these screws and then made them go on so much easier. But also, my dominoes had a fair amount of use, so there probably was a little bit, hopefully a little bit of dust in those holes. So I'm just gonna place this so that they can still move around a bit. You can see that they're still loose. They're elongated holes here. So now our goal is to get this thing calibrated onto the front. Now, as a self-centering guide, what we wanna know is I want, is if this cursor here is already center of my mortise, I wanna make sure that I can place an object on here where its center is dead on that cursor here, and then I'm going to move these guides around them to lock down the calibration. So you're gonna see this procedure in a moment. Now, this is 60 millimeters wide. I went ahead and I took a wheel marking gauge, you know, and I set it to approximately 30 millimeters. I marked it on this side, then marked it from the other side. So I kept doing that and adjusting it until eventually I could mark on this side and then mark on this side, and I was marking the same line. So this is dead, dead center with a knife line. Now I wanna mark a line dead center here, but that can be a little difficult to see in this exotic wafer board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a strip of blue tape here first. So I've got my piece of blue tape on here. Now I'm gonna take the marking gauge and I'm gonna mark it really nice and deep. Perfect. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna peel off one side. That's gonna be really easy to see now. So with these loosened up so that I can slide the cursors over, I'm gonna flip the domino over. You can see that there's a fair amount of clearance with those knobs, so that's actually useful in this case. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this block, I'm gonna place it up against the fence of the body, and I'm gonna sight with the cursor to make sure that that line is right down the middle of the cursor here. So you can see that, it's actually pretty good right there. So I'm going to get that dead perfect, and then I'm going to clamp the piece of exotic wafer board in place. Really hard, because I don't want it to move. <laughs> now we can flip it over and we can do the rest of the calibration. Now that the center point of this wafer board is exactly on that crosshair that I've already calibrated to be dead center of the mortise, I mean I did that work before, now I'm taking advantage of it, I should be able to just slide these in until they butt the side of the board and tighten everything up and I'll be done. There's only a couple things that you might want to do first. First, you're gonna to want to snug these up just a little bit. You don't want them tight. You just want them to the point where that dovetail is gonna grab so that these are 90 degrees. You don't want them splaying out or splaying in. So once you've got that, you can just sort of give it a light squeeze till it's on either side of the board, just fine. You know, push this up so that it looks kind of 90. I can be a little anal about that, so I'll just take this little combination square. There's a little bit of room under there so you can scoot it under and kind of press it up against this if you like. Uh, you can get it kind of 90. Uh, as long as you've eyeballed it to 90, you're okay. If this was extremely skew, which you can't even do because of the elongated holes, if it was extremely skew, you'd be introducing an error. But as long as you're kind of eyeballed 90, you're going to be just fine. So you can squeeze that on either side of the board, tighten these down, make sure you're still okay, and now we'll go ahead and tighten these up. Now that we're tightened up, we're calibrated, but you don't want to do this every time. So we're going to go ahead and slide these bars in. Now I'll loosen these up. These are just some Phillips head screws. Now we're just going to slide them in until they touch, they squeeze up against the base of the domino. So I'm going to start on this side here. Now one of the suggestions Rick has in his manual is, you know, start in this upper right-hand corner screw, because when you're turning it, it's going to naturally want to push itself up against the domino base, so not a bad idea. So now when we place this back on, it's automatically gonna snug around the base and be in the exact same position. So we should be good to go now. Now to test this calibration, I'm gonna cross cut this board in half and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put a mortise in here on both sides and see how we did. This is our original board. I'm gonna place a self-centering guide so the domino is gonna go in this direction and then I'm gonna pivot it and rotate it around and go this direction. If there's any error on it being centered, the error is gonna be doubled. So if we were to put this together and it comes out like this, that step, the distance of that step, divided by two is the amount of the error. And I sure hope we're not that far off. Now I will say that one of the things I would have liked with these guide stops is if these outer edges here had a slight bevel to them. Just enough so that when you're trying to insert this, 
it would be a little bit easier, right? For me, looking down like this, it's pretty easy. But when it was the other way, uh, it was actually difficult to get it to scoop up. The domino trim stops have a bit of a bevel there, and it makes it a little easier. It's a very minor complaint. So now let's see how we did. I honestly can't feel anything wrong, so <laughs> came out all right. Yeah, that's about dead perfect. Now, last night I did it on these blocks here just to have some fun with it, and it turned out that I did have a little bit of a ledge. So what I'm gonna explain, if you use the procedure in the manual, basically the idea would be that, well, you know, like any of these procedures, well, then try it again. Try being more accurate, see what you did wrong. It turns out that this ledge is so small that I can actually take some veneer tape, I can fold it in half so it's doubled, place it on here, and that ledge goes away. So again, this error is double what it is on those guides. So in a way, if I just took one little piece of this veneer tape and stuck it to the inside of one of the guides, you'd have to figure out which one it is, then you'll have corrected for that error without having to go through that whole procedure. And who cares if you got this on there? You could easily remove it. It peels right off. And similarly, you could use blue tape if it's a little bit thicker. What I'd like to do now is just a brief demo where I'm going to show you how to join this piece 90 degrees to this piece here and how to do that with the self-centering guide. Now the key to the self-centering guide, of course, is the self-centering, but to me, the real key to it is that you can get these equidistant around the center, and I think that that's how you should really be thinking about it. So when I set this to the width of this board, and I slide these together till they, till they touch, and the board's around there, then cinch these down, the key is that if I flip this up, this to the center, is the same exact distance as this to the center. The fact that these happen to be the width of this board is kind of ancillary. So when I do this joinery, first I'm going to do it centered, and then I'm going to show you how to do it off center. So let's do this one centered. I'm going to put the, I'm going to join these like this. So let's go ahead and put the mortise directly into the center of this board. Now this mortise is exactly centered on here. The dis to connect it here, the distance from this edge to the center of this mortise has to be the same distance as from this surface to the center of this mortise, which happens to be the center function. So what we're going to do is to mortise this piece here, we're going to place it on the bottom of the domino. I'm going to drop this one out of the way so that I can scoot all the way over until I butt that. And now I'm going to place the mortise. There we go. Nice and flush, very flush, in all respects. So that's perfect. Now, because this was centered on this board, this is something that can happen. The thickness I set that to isn't necessarily an integral number of the thickness of this board. So while I'm assembling it, it's very possible that I could rotate this by accident, put this in, and because that was centering, it's like, oh yeah, that's nice and flush, but take a look, it's horrible. Now, of course, you're not gonna be that far off. But say my board was 22 and a half millimeters thick, so I sent it, set the thickness of the domino to 22 millimeters. This would only be a quarter millimeter off, but it would be enough that you're gonna have a ledge that you're gonna have to deal with with sanding or planing. So you kind of want to make sure that you keep those reference surfaces in mind. And one of the ways I think is easiest for doing this, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate this by taking this same board, but I'm going to mortise it onto this side so we can see. I'll leave that domino there so we can tell which side I'm working on. The way I'm going to do this, this is currently set for the thick for the width of this board. I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up and kind of move them out just a little bit more. Arbitrary amount, completely arbitrary. So you can see I've got just a little bit more. What's going to happen is that mortise is going to be off center. Now you're going to say, why would I want to do that if I have a self-centering guide? Again, the key is that the distance from here to the center and here to the center is the same. So you can flip these to whichever surface that you need and you know that you're going to have that same distance to the middle. That is actually the key of this guide. So in a sense, I think it's, it's poorly named, but I really can't think of a better name. Maybe Floyd. 
So now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mortise this in. And we'll see how we're going to do it. So in mortising on the side of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this stop up and this one here down. And then I'm going to mortise off on the end. Now, the distance from this outside reference surface to the center of that domino is this distance here to the center of the domino. That's the same distance as from here to the center of the domino. So when I'm going to go put this one here on this edge, right, let's say that this is going to be my top reference surface because I'm going to want to attach it like so. When I rotate this around, well now I need to use this flip stop instead. So I'll drop this one and use this one and we're going to do it right off the edge. So you can see that this is considerably lower than the one that was previously there because of that extra arbitrary offset. You can also see that that's off center. Now normally you're not going to want to go that far off, but I want to make it obvious on the camera. So now when I put this together, yeah, it's still flush. But one point, when you're assembling this and doing your glue up, if this was backwards, it couldn't be more obvious, even if the thickness was an integral thickness that you had here. So to me, this is actually an advantage, is to have it just a hair off so that when you go to assemble it, so when you're in that traumatizing moment of the glue up and you push this together and it goes like that, you're like, oh, obviously I flipped this for some reason. Then you'll pull this out and you'll flip it around and you'll be just golden. So uh, I think that you should, my personal recommendation is to keep, keep track of your reference surfaces. That's the important part of this tool. If you understand how to keep, maintain your reference surfaces and keep track of them as you're doing your mortises, this, that is the golden key to this tool. And this happens to make it a lot easier, simply because of the way that it's going to be an infinitely adjustable, equidistant to the middle guide that we'll just call Floyd.